Hey there, we are going to do more review today and um, the way that it's going to work is you'll try a problem then you can come back and watch the video and I'll go over it. Just to warn you, there are some nasty calculations ahead of us which I'm not even looking forward to doing but we are all in this together so we will all do the nasty calculations. So um, go ahead and start with this problem, pause the video, come back when you're ready to go over it. So the way that I'm going to approach this is I'm going to find the distance between the x values and the distance between the y values and use those to um, create a right triangle. So I might have the triangle upside down if I actually plotted the points, but the way that these work is the x values would be the horizontal distance between the two points, the y values would be the vertical distance between the two points, and then side c, the hypotenuse, is the um, actual distance between the two points diagonally. So I'm just gonna set that aside. So the x values, here we have seven and three fourths and negative one and one eighth. So to find the distance between two numbers on the opposite sides of zero, you have to add them. I'm gonna move y over here so I have work room. So um, you guys know how to do that. So seven and three fourths plus one and one eighth, we'll get the distance between them, common denominators, et cetera, and you get eight and seven eighths. For the y values, same deal. That you could probably do in your head. They're on different sides of zero, so you add them again. Two and a half plus three is a distance of five and a half. So now I have to put them into the Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Doesn't matter which one's a and b. Eight and seven eighths squared. And you usually put those in parentheses. So somebody knows that it's the whole fraction, the whole mixed number being squared, plus five and a half squared equals c squared. c squared is the diagonal distance between the two points. All right, well, I'm definitely going to need um, some scratch work here, although you could probably convert them into um, decimals, and that might even be easier. Either way, um, I think I'm going to show the fractions, but you could do it either way. So eight, to find eight and seven eighths squared, you would just multiply 71 eighths, that's the improper fraction, times another 71 eighths, and you end up getting 5041 over 64. 5041 over 64. Decimals are fine too. Plus five and a half squared. So converting those into a improper fraction, it's gonna be 11 halves times 11 halves equals 121 fourths. That one's not too bad. All of that equals c squared. The common denominators are actually not that bad because four times 16 is 64. So if I just multiply the top and the bottom by 16, I can see that that's the same thing as uh, 1936 over 64. All right, so I have 5041 64 plus 1936 64 equals c squared. Adding those up, um, I end up getting 6977 over 64 equals c squared. Take the square root of both sides. And when I type this into my calculator, I'm going to type the fraction part first and then take the square root. So, let's see, I'm going to do 6977 seven, divided by 64 equals, set that number aside, take the square root, and I get that C, the diagonal distance, is 10.44 approximately units. If you did the whole problem with decimals, you should get the same answer. All right. So um, before you start number five, I want to give you some tips. So when it says what is the volume of the truck pictured, what they are referring to is the volume of this rectangular prism. It actually is a full rectangle, so maybe my picture um, might be misleading. So you're, it's like this whole thing that's on the back of the truck that's used to store the supplies. So that's one thing I wanted to consider. So you're not considering the wheels 
or the cab part of the truck where the people sit. The other thing I want to show you before you get started is how to square something that has a square root in it. So when you're squaring something like 8 root 2 and you have to square the whole thing, it's almost like distributive. The squared gets distributed to the 8 and to the root 2. So you end up having 8 squared times the square root of 2 squared. 8 squared we can do is 64 times, when you take the square root of 2 and then square it, the square root and the 2 cancel out. So you just get 2. So the answer to 8 root 2 squared is whatever 64 times 2 is, which is 128. So that's how you would do something like this. Go ahead, pause the video, try the problem, come back when you're ready to go over it. All right, so hopefully you are ready to go over it now. Um, I can see that finding the volume, I'm going to need three numbers. I'm going to need the length and the width, which would be the 8 root 2 and however long this is. And then I also need the height. So that diagonal going down the center of the truck does not help me with the volume, but it helps me um, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing um, yellow highlighted area of the truck. So if I were to take this triangle that is sitting across the top of the truck, I have my x here, that's my missing um, dimension. I have 8 root 2 here, and I have 13 root 3 here. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm assuming that the right angle is right there. Um, it is a rectangle, so we can assume it's a right angle. a and b, it doesn't matter which one you say is which but one would be eight root two squared, and you'd put that in parentheses so that way the audience knows the entire thing's being squared. Plus x squared, that's my missing side, equals 13 root three, yeah, root three squared. Now I already showed the work above for eight root two squared, so it's gonna be 128 plus x squared equals. Now to do 13 root three squared, it's the same thing, so I'll do the work down here. The squared gets distributed to the 13 and to the root 3. So I have 13 squared times root 3 squared. The reason that I'm multiplying in the middle of that is because right here there's actually a secret multiplication. So the original number is 13 times root 3 squared. So I'm just breaking those apart and squaring each of them. 13 squared is 169 times the square root and the squared cancel out. So this leaves me with just three, and that's 507. So equals 507. When you finish solving that, you guys know how to do that. You end up getting x equals 19.468. All right, so now I have my three numbers for the uh, volume. So the volume of a rectangular prism is the area of the base times the height. The area of the base, it doesn't really matter what side you use, I'm gonna use the top of the truck. So the area of the base is gonna be eight root two times 19.468 times the height of the truck, which is 11.4. And then I'll show you how I would type this into my calculator. The first thing that I'd probably type in, because um, keep in mind that when you're multiplying things, you if everything's being multiplied, you can multiply them in any order you want. So the first thing that I would, might type in is that root 2, because that's going to take me two things to type in. Um, so essentially what's happening here is it's 8 times the square root of 2 times 19.468 times 11.4 there's four different things being multiplied and I can type them in in whatever order I want. So I'm going to start with root two. All right, there's my root two. Now the rest of them are easy to type in. Times eight times 19.468 times 11.4 gives me a volume of 2,510 
3.91 approximately, and I could see the unit is feet cubed. That would be my final answer. All right, so we're gonna keep going. All right, page 76, uh, problem six, please pause the video, come back when you're ready to see the solution. All right, hopefully you're ready. Some information they give me is that angle, or not angle, line A and line B are parallel, which makes all these other lines going through them um, transversals that I might have to consider at different points. And like always with these angle problems, I'm doing it live in front of you. Um, so you might hear me like thinking or trying to figure this kind of stuff out. So let me think about what relationships I might want to use. Um, well, right away, I like the fact that this number is a whole number. Or not, it's not a whole number, but it doesn't have a variable is what I mean. So I think I'm going to fill in the rest of that section. So I know... The vertical angle relationship means that this number is also 67.9. And then I know that here's a straight line. So these two angles must be supplementary to each other. They add up to 180, which leaves me with 112.1. And then here's another vertical relationship, 112.1. So that gets me started. I don't know if that's going to be helpful or not. Um, I think what I might like to use next is this triangle right here. I know that the sides of a triangle have to add up to 180, and I only have one variable because x is used twice. So a relationship I can use is that 5.4x, that's one uh, angle, plus x plus 35 and 1 fifth, that's another angle, plus 67.9 has to equal 180. So those three angles have to add up to 180 because they're in a triangle. I see that I have uh, some like terms here. So I can add these up. So that's a total of 6.4 x's. And then I'm gonna convert them both to decimals and add my uh, constants. And I end up getting 103.1 equals 180. Subtract 103.1 from both sides, and you get 6.4x equals 76.9. Divide both sides by 6.4. You get x equals 12.02. And that's actually the answer to the first one, 12.02. It's not going to have a degree symbol on there because in the picture there's, um, oh, I actually do see a, an angle x right there. So I think you could do it either way. Some of the x's are within angles. Some of the x's are by themselves. So you could say it with degrees or not degrees and it doesn't really matter. Now, what is the value of each angle? So now they want me to go back and find what each one equals. And I'm just gonna fill that in in the picture. So starting with this guy on the bottom here, I need to do 12.02 plus 35.2. That's what one fifth is. And Let's see, so, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Uh, so 12.02 plus 35.2274, drop the decimal down. So that one's gonna be 47.22. Um, then this guy up here is gonna be 5.4 times 12.02. So you could multiply that however you want. 54 um, multiplied by 1202, put the decimals back in the end, and you end up getting 64.91. This plain old x is just going to be what x is, 12.02. I can see that I have a vertical line right here and that these three angles all add up to 180. So if, I'm just gonna pick a random variable, a, 12.02 plus a plus 64.91 equals 180. And when you solve that, you end up getting um, a equals 103.07.
And then, let's see, I'm gonna get rid of all my other marks here. If you look here, there's a vertical angle relationship right here, because they share both sides. So 64.91 would also be the um, value of that angle. And that's all the angles. So answers to that are above. Okay. Same thing here. Try this last page and um, pause the video. Come back when you're ready to go over it. All right, so this one looks pretty complicated. Um, I see that there's this line going partially through. I want to extend it to make it go all the way through because they tell me in the clues that A and B are parallel to each other. Okay, so let's see what else I can do. I think I want to look up here and see that these three angles add up to a straight angle. They are supplementary. So if I just call this angle B, I know angle B plus 50 plus that's a right angle has to equal 180. So that tells me that B is 40 when you solve that. Okay, so I can get rid of all those marks. Let's see what else I want to use. Um, if I call this a transversal, connecting my two green parallel lines, I could see that this 112 and this angle right here would be alternate interior angles and they would be congruent to, e to each other. So this would also be 112. Okay, get in somewhere. I'm gonna move that 112 in. And if that's 112, I can see that 112 in this angle have to add up to 180. So that's gonna be 68, they're supplementary. Getting closer to angle A. Here's a triangle. So 40, 68, and my mystery angle, I'm gonna call that angle C, have to add up to 180 because the, tr the insides of a triangle have to add up to 180. So I'm doing that work um, off to the side and I got 72. All right, I'm really close now because now 72 and angle A are supplementary. They have to add up to 180. So if 72 plus A has to equal 180, that makes A 108 degrees. So 108 degrees would be my answer. That's a pretty hard problem because you have to think to extend that line to create that extra um, triangle in there. All right, and then some review. Four less than twice a number. Less than is a switching word. So that means twice a number has to go first, 2x, and then less than, and then the four has to go at the end. The sum of one quarter of a number and six. So sum is the relationship word, and then the two pieces of it are quarter of a number and six. So a quarter of a number would be x over four or one fourth x, doesn't matter, and six. All right, then distribute. So um, an easy way to multiply something by three fourths, if you can, is to divide the number by four, then multiply by three. So 12 divided by four is three, times three is nine x, minus six I, is not divisible by four, so I might write out the work real quick. Three fourths times six over one, reduce, nine halves, which is four and a half. And here, so I've done both of these distributing, and then here I have to distribute the opposite out. So minus one and a half X plus five. Combine like terms, nine minus, um, nine minus one and a half I need to do first. So nine minus one and a half, I need to make it eight and two halves. It's gonna be seven and one half X. And then I have to do my um, constants, 
and I get one half.